Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me here today for marketing your travel business. Um, my name is Janet Wolf. Um, I have been an agent with Archer for just about a year. It'll be a year next week. Um, so what I'm going to go over today with you is giving you some ideas and tips on how to market your travel agent business. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to go over some basics. There's about seven parts um, that I've kind of come up with that are basics for marketing your business or getting your business ready to market it. We'll go over uh, three things to know um, to get your website to sell for you. I'll go over a communication plan that you should have. Talk about growing your email list. Talk about some automation and systemization that you can put in place to make things easier for you. Having an abundant mindset. And I'll go over what that is. And then lastly, the whole marketing part of it. So the first part is the basics. And like I said, there's seven parts to it. So the first part we're going to touch on is your niche. You want to make sure when you become a travel agent that you're thinking about what type of travel you want to sell, because that will really narrow it down to who it is that you want to market your business to. Um, do you want to focus on Disney trips, uh, Disney cruises? Do you want to focus on just cruises at you know, in general, do you want to focus on Hawaii? Do you want to focus on Europe? Figure out what area you want to uh, sell, and that is your niche. And that's what you want to focus on when you are thinking about marketing your business. You want to make sure that it's clear. If it's a destination that you want to specialize in, like I said, it, it makes it easier uh, for, for attracting clients. <clears throat> the second part of this is your core marketing message. This is ultimately your mission statement and it should be really clear and it should be concise. I'll show you an example. This is what mine is. I am a travel agent who helps clients plan their dream vacations to exotic and warm islands such as Maldives, Bora Bora, the Caribbean, and Hawaii. I take care of every single detail so that you have time to enjoy your vacation and make memories while resting easy knowing that you'll absolutely love your time together and getting the best deal possible. In that mission statement, I ultimately told you what it is I focus on, what type of travel I do, and what I can do to help make your trip the best trip possible. Also, getting the best deal possible. The third part is your client consultation. Now, this is so important. This is where you're going to start building your relationship with your client. When you start out as an agent, a lot of us send out... Um, agent or client intake forms. And it's usually just a, go a Google sheet that we create that we send out to our potential clients and ask them to fill it out in regards to everything about their trip, what, what uh, airports they wanna use, where they live, their contact information, um, things deep down are digging deep into their trip. Like what types of hotel rooms do they want? Um, do they need rental cars? Are they going on a cruise? Where do they want their room on their cruise ship to be? That type of thing. The best thing you can do to really start building that relationship is to create what I call a complimentary vacation planning session. And what this is, I have this set up on my website. It's on every single page of my website. And it's something simple that I created in Calendly. And I set up 15 to 20 minute sessions throughout my week. I have it already planned out. I have time set aside for that. So when I get a client that is inquiring about a trip, I'll send them the link and ask them to pick a time where I can get them on the phone and I can do the intake form with them. I can fill it out as I go along. That way I can ask them other questions that might come up as we're, as we're going through the intake form. Um, and I'm building that relationship with them. I'm getting a, a, um, a feel and a sense for who my client is and what type of vacation it is that they're actually looking for. So you're building that relationship. And like I said, it makes it easier to, to try and do um, a quote for a trip for somebody when you really understand their needs and wants out of their vacation. Another thing you can do once you set up this complimentary vacation planning session in Calendly. Now, like I said, it doesn't have to be in Calendly. It could still be the form as long as you have a link to the form or whatnot. 
create a simple landing page. Um, the best one that they have out there is a website called Linked, Linked Tree, and it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. And what you can do with this is you can pretty much create a landing page that will have links to everything associated with your business. You can put a link into your website. You can put a link to this complimentary planning session if you, if you created it, if you went that route. You could put a link to the intake form. And what you're doing is you're creating something simple and quick and easy to remember. So that if you happen to be out at the mall and somebody starts talking about travel, you can say, listen, go check out chatwithjanet.com. And when they bring that up, it has links to everything and just say, you know, plan a session with me or fill out an intake form or check out my website, whatever it is that you have on that linked tree, everything is right there. And it's simple and it's easy for them to remember um, so that they can go back and, and fill, this, fill these things out, whether it's, you know, planning the session with you or filling out the form or whatnot. Um, so like I said, keep it really simple and easy to remember for your clients. And one thing I will tell you, if you haven't already realized it, spreadsheets are going to become your best friend. You're going to use spreadsheets for everything from keeping track of your bookings to keeping track of your commissions, keeping track of all of your passwords, um, keeping track of Facebook pages that you join and you do mock bookings into. They're just going to become your best buddy. So if you haven't gotten into that yet, um, be prepared. <clears throat> The fourth part of the basics is the name, the name of your business. Now you want it to be clear and you want it to be concise and that's always better than being clever. So like I said, something simple. Um, when I, I wish I had known this when, when I first started about keeping it kind of clear and concise instead of being clever with it. Um, my travel business is lifetime excursion travel. It's long, there's too many E's that are kind of intertwined with each other, um, but it rolls off my tongue. I was thinking of something just that I wanted to make lifetime memories and, and go on excursions of a lifetime pretty much. Um, but if you can keep your business name simple, then again, it's something that's easy for people to remember when you're out, like I said, when you're out and about, that's how you kind of get your name out there. You get out and meet people um, talking in the store, talking at the park, at the dog park, wherever it may be. Something simple that can kind of just roll off your tongue and can kind of stick in your client's mind. That leads me into your domain. So when you create your domain name, you want to make sure that you're keeping all the names uh, or the name as close to possible as you can with other social media accounts and things that you might have. So, like I said, I wish I had known all this or really thought about it before I created my business name, but I've gone, I've done, I've, I've rolled with it. Um, but you want to keep it, if you're doing Travel with Janet, you want to make sure that it's travelwithjanet.com. And then on Facebook, you want to make sure it's Travel with Janet. On Pinterest, Travel with Janet. Make sure that the name of the business is the same across every single platform because then it makes it a lot easier for people to find you. If they know the name of your business and they're looking for it, um, it, it really makes it simple if everything is the same. Again, mine is Lifetime Excursion Travel, um, and it was really hard to find that across all platforms, social media platforms, but I tried to stay as close as I could to it. But then I also have links to all of my social media on my website and my Facebook page and everything like that. So um, hopefully people are still finding me. At least I know that they are because I'm getting business. All right, part six is your email. Now I know that when you guys uh, joined, you were told to create a separate email because of all of the uh, emails that we get from our vendors and suppliers and all that, which is perfectly fine. Absolutely 100% perfectly fine. I have a Gmail account. My Gmail account is the lifetime excursion um, at gmail.com. That is my email address right now. But again, you wanna make sure that you're coming as close as you can um, to your actual business name. Now, another suggestion that you could do is you could go into Google and you can create an email of lifetime, uh, Janet at lifetimeexcursiontravel.com. 
Now, the reason why you want to have your name at yourbusinessname.com is because it really looks professional. It looks like a real business. Um, it looks like something that's really established and um, it's more appealing to your clients. And it's also simple too. your name at yourbusinessname.com. It's really simple for them to kind of remember. Again, you're making this easy for your potential clients um, to find you. So what you can do is I have this email set up, this Janet at lifetimeexcursiontravel.com. I have that set up through Google. Um, I believe I used Google Workspace or Google Suite. I don't know which one it goes by now. Um, and what I can do is I can go into my Gmail account and I can forward it, forward any emails that come into that account to my new Janet at lifetimeexcursiontravel.com email. I was able to tie my domain name into Google Suite, and that is how I got the Janet at mybusinessname.com. Um, super simple. I can go through it more with you. You can reach out to me. My contact information will be shown at the end, um, but it's super simple to do. And uh, like I said, it kind of makes it um, a little bit more professional to your clients. Now, the last part to the basics is coming up with monthly goals. Now, with the monthly goals, you want to make sure that you're creating a monthly booking and a monthly revenue goal. But one thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is you want to make sure that they're realistic like absolutely 100% realistic. You wanna make sure it's something that you can achieve in six months. Future down the line, I would love to have a monthly income goal of at least 50,000. Let's just throw that number out there. I would love to have that as, as a monthly income or monthly revenue of $50,000. So if I set that goal for myself right now, now, like if I were to do it when I first started, there's no way that I would have been able to achieve that in my second month of business. And by when you set goals and you don't achieve them, what happens? You get discouraged. And then you think, well, then maybe this isn't for me. Well, no, it, it is for you. It's just you set an unrealistic goal for yourself. So you want to make sure that you're thinking, like I said, realistically, and you want to think six months into the future. So if I wanted to make um, a monthly income, like commission income of $5,000, I got to kind of think about how that's going to work. And you got to plan for it because as travel agents, we don't get paid until after the client returns back from their vacation. And usually that's about 30, 60, 90 days after they return. So again, you got to think realistically in your goals and keep that in mind when you are doing this. Um, and the last thing that you want to do and you want to write your goals everywhere, 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 everywhere. I spent the past two days doing a annual planning workshop. And in that workshop, I was learning how to have a work life and home life um, harmony. I don't want to say balance, but I wanted to build a harmony between my work life and my home life so that they gel together. And that is an amazing workshop. And what it what I got out of that is putting my goals and inspiration in front of me. So I'm looking right now in front of me a whiteboard that has um, quotes that I picked up from the training. It's got my goals for 2023. It has my monthly goals. So I know exactly what I want my goals to be each month. And again, I put it everywhere. It's right in front of me. So every time I sit down to do my work, it's right there in front of me. So that is a huge thing too. When you are thinking about marketing, you want to think about what kind of goals you want to make. Do you want to, you know, put flyers in people's mailboxes in like three neighborhoods a week? Uh, do you want to reach out to five schools and talk to them about working with them? Um, do you have a goal to, to hand out a hundred business cards a day or something like that? You know, it can start up simple like that with your marketing goals, but then it's also going to help you uh, think about what you want your revenue and booking goals to be in the future. All right, on to number two, we are going to talk about a website that sells. So there are, there are three things that every website needs to do for you. The first one is you need it to connect with your target market. This is where your mission statement is going to come into effect, where 
it's going to help you target your um, or promote your your website out to the people that want what you are uh, offering. So that will help you uh, on Facebook, for instance, there's tons of Facebook groups out there for people who want to travel to Europe or want to travel to the Caribbean or go to go to Disney or whatever. That'll help you focus where you market your website. Um, and so if you when you are creating your website and keeping that in mind, if you are thinking about that and targeting that to the people that you want to bring on as clients, it really helps you. You want to also be able to capture your client's email somewhere on your website, whether it's asking them to join a newsletter that you may possibly be doing. Um, it could be something down in the future that you want to do. So maybe start collecting emails now so that um, when you have that, that newsletter up and running, you have all the emails to send it out to. Um, ask, asking for feedback on the website, you know, an input or a contact page where uh, they have to put in their information, including their email. Again, something where you are just capturing that, their prospect, your prospect's email so that you can reach out to them in the future. And the last thing it's, its um, job is to do, the website, is to take those prospects and convert them into clients for you. So you want to make sure that the scheduling link or your intake form is on every page so that every time they go to a page, there's an option there for them to reach out to you and plan that trip or get, get the gears going and thinking about what trip they want to do. Uh, if you, like I said, if you have multiple pages on your web website, have a scheduling link on every page. I have it at the top of mine. It stays there. Every time somebody switches the page, that link to schedule the session is right at the top. Number three is your communication plan. So this is something that is simple. It's strategic. Um, and it's going to add a lot of value to your clients on a consistent basis. Um, this could be something like as simple as when you have a client that um, that you're working with, keeping them in tune, like saying, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm working on that trip bid for you. It'll be ready tomorrow and then getting it out to them, checking back with them. Um, if you sent them the quote, checking in with them a day later, make sure that they reviewed it. If they have any questions, if there's any adjustments that they want to make to it, something as simple as that. Always keeping communication open with your clients. Uh, like I said, think about creating a newsletter um, along, you know, a newsletter that will have content in it that's going to be valuable to your client. Um, create videos or include videos of exotic islands. Like I said, I focus on um, the Caribbean and um, exotic islands and Hawaii and stuff like that. So maybe in my newsletter, I'll include videos of, of Hawaii or, or, you know, certain things that are going on in those areas. Um, if you're doing a blog, in include information from a fam trip that you might have done. P post pictures in there from the fam trip and, and the location that you went and visited and do a little write-up on it. Kind of give them some information to think about where they might want to go in the future. Your plan will do three things. It's going to inspire your clients. It's going to um, build a know, like, and trust relationship between the two of you, which is what you really want to do. And three, it's going to keep you at the top of your mind. Now, I'm going to refer to Sierra's post that she had put out on, um, in the Discord uh, last week or the week before, where she had a client who had a sticky note. She was, her client was planning on going on a vacation, and she had reached out to Sierra or, you know, make sure I contact Sierra about this trip. And, and this is the post here. Um, and says, I made myself a reminder to uh, to reach out to you. And I love that because Sierra is posting on her Facebook page and she's sending out communications to her clients and she's always getting in their mind whether they know it or not. But when they think of somebody that does travel, they think of Sierra. So that's what you want to be doing to your clients. All right, number four is growing your email list. Now you want to make sure that you have at least three to five good lead sources that are continuously sending you prospective clients to your website. Now, how do we do this? First and foremost, like Jody always says, post your mock bookings. Post them on Facebook. You want to go five different groups, 
three times a day. That's 15 different groups every single day that you're posting your mock bookings in. And you may not be getting any information back. You may not be having people reaching out to you right then and there about it, but you're putting seeds in their mind and they're seeing these fantastic deals on vacations and thinking, hmm, maybe I want to take my family there. So it, it's, you may not see results today, but next week you might have that person reaching out to you and saying, listen, I saw your post on Facebook and I'm looking or curious to, uh, I'm going on a vacation with my family. Can you help me? I've had at least five people reach out to me in the past week about cruises. Um, so it's, it's, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So posting your, your mock bookings on Facebook is the number one way that you can get, um, you can get leads. The next one is Google ads. Depending on how you do the Google ads, I've done it and, I, and I've had to pay a lot of money for them. Um, I still have to kind of look into that myself, but Google ads is a, is a way if you know how to do it, um, you can get your name out there and it'll help you get to, um, there's ways in which you can maneuver your web page in such a way that when you when people do searches for travel agents in your website that you can come up on the first page as opposed to like the 300th page. But Google Ads is another way for you to um, to get some leads. Simply doing out and about when you're at the stores, when you're at the gas station, when you are um, at sporting events, when you're with your kids at their um, at their hockey games or their baseball games or cheerleading competitions, things like that. Just chat with people and tell them, you know, about what you do or just bring up a, like a, an amazing trip that you just um, posted about and, and just generate some, um, some gap. And it kind of, like I said, it gets people thinking and being like, Oh, Janet's a, a travel agent. Maybe she could help us, you know, leaving your business cards everywhere. Uh, one thing I've done, I've gone into um, Target, I've gone into Kohl's, I've gone into Walmart, and I've gone to their travel section, and I've opened up the suitcases, and I've thrown business cards in them. Uh, if somebody's looking for a suitcase, they're looking to go on a vacation, so why not throw your card in there and kind of, you know, put your name out there for free advertising, plain and simple. Um, there's community boards at uh, local local uh, community centers or um, see if you can get some advertising into uh, any brochures that that um, schools are doing uh, like for plays or musicals or even big football games or anything like that see if you can get into advertising that way um, leaving information or pamphlets business cards whatever at hair salons at nail salons at doctor's offices um, even when you go to gas stations to get gas, just take a business card and like shove it in like a crack somewhere and then have it sticking out. Um, these are just the, some ideas. Uh, I know that we've talked about a lot of these in in the um, in the presentation when you came to to hear about being a travel agent. They talked about churches. Uh, reach out to your local churches and talk to them about helping them plan any trips or anything like that and giving back to the community. Um, I live in a town where there's tons of youth sports. When I tell like we are a hockey town. So there's tons of hockey around me. So reaching out to, um, like I said, local sports teams, hockey, basketball, baseball, cheerleading. Oh my God, cheerleading competitions. I know so many people that go to Florida every year for dance or cheerleading competitions. So that could be something to get into and do and plan the travel for that. And then lastly, there's Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, all of your social media, Twitter. Um, again, like how many people see your see your things? Um, just go on those um, platforms and start liking other people's pages and then they start liking you back. And then next thing you know, you've got a, a million views or a million followers and they're um, constantly seeing what you post. So um, definitely do that and stay up to date on that too. Number five is your automation and systemization. Now this is where you're gonna come up with a system that is going to be um, helping you to do everyday things. So there's so many things that you can automate now. Um, you can automate, you can create posts 
in Canva, and you can actually schedule those to be posted to your Facebook pages for you. Um, you can also automate when you post to Facebook that it posts to an Instagram account. Um, take advantage of all these little autom autom automated systems for you so that's one less thing that you have to worry about. Also have an effective follow-up system. So if you have somebody that is filling out an intake form, sorry. If you have a client that is filling out an intake form, have a follow-up system to that. All right, they filled it out today. Tomorrow I'm going to reach out to them and we're going to get on the phone and we're going to do this, we'll do that. And, or even, um, you know, just following up with, with people after they return from their trips, um, sending them out a card or a thank you note or anything like that. Um, just making sure that you have a system in place and that you're sticking to it. You want to have a, um, an effective client booking system in place too, a process that li literally takes them from the very first conversation that they have with you until the time that they walk in the door from their trip. You want to make sure that you're in constant communication with them, that you have dates on the calendar for when payments are due, that you, um, you know, have things or listed when you're going to send out their itineraries and, and things like that. Like I put together little packets for my for my clients that includes any little pamphlets on the, on the um, destination that they're going to, plus their itinerary, business cards, anything like that. Um, so I, I send that out to them, plus like other little things too. But, you know, keep it in mind, you know, you want to make sure that you have, um, have a system in place, excuse me, in place for that. Having pre-written emails in place so that literally all you have to do is kind of copy and paste um, makes it so much easier. Um, for instance, my job post, I, I use the same job post all the time. And rather than sitting there and copying it over or typing it over and over and over again, I just copy and paste. I've typed it up. I have it in my, um, I use OneNote, Microsoft OneNote. And in there, I keep track of everything. And I have a section for all of my emails, all of my posts, um, everything like that. So I can just go in and copy and paste. And I don't have to sit there for hours um, uh, retyping everything. <clears throat> you want to keep track of all of your clients and bookings in one place. Like I said, I use OneNote. I have a great, great system that I have set up in there. Um, I have a list of all of the trips that I've done including all of their contact information, where they're going, all of the um, itinerary numbers and stuff like that. Plus, I also have what the total of the trip is, how much commission I'm supposed to be getting, um, what my commission total is when it comes back, when I get paid, if I got paid, that type of thing. I keep it all in one place so that I know um, exactly where, where everything is, how much I made on each trip, and whether I got paid for it or not. So number six is having an abundant mindset. This is so important. Um, when you become a travel agent and you're going through all of the training, it can be so overwhelming. There's a lot of information, especially if you've never done travel before and you're new to the business, it's so much information and you man, your mind can get on absolute overload. Um, you want to make sure that you're staying positive though. Take a little bit at a time. Don't overdo it. Don't overthink stuff. You want to go through the videos and make sure that you're doing everything that they're saying because there, there's there's a system and a way that things are done um, that have been successful in the past for others. So why not, you know, if, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, but you want to make sure that you're staying positive in this because positivity will always um, attract other positive things into your life. Number two is you want to kind of keep um, a positive mindset book. Keep something that you read, whether it's a couple pages every morning that you take to, you know, take time to yourself. Um, the seven hour hour work week is um, is a great one. It kind of helps you um, kind of plan out your week. Don't sweat the small stuff is another great one. Pretty much any book by John Maxwell is amazing in terms of um, being a leader and everything like that. The Abundance Code is a great book. Um, you are a badass at making money. Plus, you are a badass anything. <laughs> um, there's so many, so many books out there. Um, like I said, you don't have to sit down and read the entire book in one sitting, but reading like a couple pages each morning to kind of get you into a positive mindset for the day. Um, and it, it'll just, it'll just help you, um, help you stay focused. So lastly, we have marketing. 
Um, again, you want to make sure that your social media outlets have pictures of you. People want to see you. They want to see who they're working with. They don't want to see a logo. They don't want to see um, a picture of an island, although that is always awesome. But they want to see a person that they that they are actually working with. Um, that's like kind of getting them on the phone and, and reassuring them that um, this person that they're working with isn't just an automated system behind the scenes. If you're a real person, um, you're there to help them, and um, you're going to make memories happen for them. Uh, you want to make sure that you are posting regularly and to the types of clients that you want to work with. Uh, like I said, when you're doing your mock bookings, if you aren't focusing or having your, your niche be Europe, why are you going to make a mock booking for Europe? Um, you know, like I said, if you're doing warm places, um, exotic islands, do mock bookings focusing on those areas and not on areas that like Japan, <laughs> you're not going to be having that as part of your niche. Um, you can always book those if people approach you about it, um, by all means. Um, but that's not where your focus would be, correct? I mean, you want to you want to think about um, the types of clients that you want to attract into your business. Again, leaving business cards everywhere. You can get them for 20 bucks on um, Vistaprint, print them all up, put them everywhere, leave them everywhere. Um, there's no harm in that. <clears throat> Another thing you could do is create flyers. You can create free flyers or even like for 10 bucks, you can make a couple copies, leave them on cars at the mall, leave them um, on cars at the parking lot. Uh, walk around certain neighborhoods and leave them in people's doors. You don't want to leave them in mailboxes because it's an illegal thing to do. Um, but you can certainly like roll them up and throw them in the handle of, of their door. Um, again, it's just something simple and kind of getting your name out there. Introduce yourself to them and say, listen, I'm a travel agent in your area. And, you know, my services are free. And, and if you are thinking about getting out of um, this cold weather, and want to go somewhere warm, I'm your go-to person. You know, something simple like that. Um, you need to be consistent. Um, marketing is not just a one and done thing. It's something that you need to be consistent on um, and you need to stay on top of. So every week when you're planning out your week of what you're going to be doing, make sure that you're planning or mar um, marking off times to do your marketing, um, whether it's a couple hours on a Tuesday or you know, an hour on a Friday, some whatever it is, whether it's doing online marketing or going out in the community and marketing that way, make sure that you're market um, that you're setting aside the time to do that and that you're doing it every single week. Lastly, technology and the internet are constantly changing. They have been. Um, and you just need to make sure that your business is evolving to accept those changes and you want to adjust your business to meet the needs for your clients. Um, the way technology is today is gonna to be completely different 10 years from now. So whatever your um, methods are and how you're marketing your business now, it's gonna change. So you wanna be able to evolve and change with that. So um, just making sure that you're kind of staying up on it and, um, and being open to the change because it, change can be scary. Um, but you also want to make sure that um, it's something that's working in a positive manner for your business. So the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Um, I thought this was a great quote from Walt Disney and um, pretty much it. You know, if, if you want to get started on something and just stop talking about it and do it, you know, that that's the only way it's going to get done. So this is my information. If you want to take a snapshot of it, or um, if you're watching this in the recording, obviously you can pause and write it down, but reach out to me if you have any questions about anything. If you want some advice on the Google suite and setting up your uh, business email, I can certainly help you with that and walk you through it and stuff like that. Um, but or if you have any, any questions at all, please reach out to me. You can reach me in the dis uh, Discord chat um, I'm here to help. Um, that's what we do. So uh, thank you again for checking out the, this training. I hope you learned some information 
And um, I really hope that your marketing goes really well with your business. Okay, thank you.